<clears throat> All right. Audio, audio, audio. Check, check, check. Oh, there's a half hour of nonsense that we didn't I don't need. Let's get rid of that. We didn't say anything profound. Check one, two. Oh, natural sound. All right. It's not, not the backyard, huh, Mike? No, not, not tonight. I got to tell no. you, man, uh, at first, like wh- while we were doing the show, right? It, it, it irritated the fuck out of me. Uh huh. But listening back to it, right? It was like a nice fireside chat. Yeah, I, I was I, really like, happy. I dug it. But I got it to, like, I was, I was sitting there going, that's fucking every, like, every it, time it, it grew like, on you. It, no, it didn't even grow. I, I, dude, I put it out of my mind until I heard it again. Yeah. W- w- uh-huh. the, the playback is good. I, I was afraid in the moment that it wasn't going to be what it ended up being. Yeah. No, it was, it was I, really I was good. Really happy with it in, in the end product. All right. We ready? Yeah. Certainly. This week on the Media Virus Podcast. Apparently, dead is a great Halloween costume. As lawn service mows around man's disrobed body, family is horrified. With our space and arms races with Russia more or less over, the U.S. is running hard and fast against China to perfect AI weapons. And we aren't a sports show and rarely report on sports ball contests. However, we would be remiss to ignore this story of post-game celebration and ass-whipping from Philadelphia. In the B-Block, we discuss getting fired on the first day, tales from Britney's Coat Hanger Chronicles, we, why we love horror movies, anti-Semitic Canadians, what? And Toyota's butt-plug battery technology. In the C-Block, we visit the TikTok nonsense corner and hear from Big Daddy with Just the Tips, number 61, on this, the 154th episode of... The Media Virus Podcast. And where are my jingles? My jingles went away. Hang on. I'll get you one. Because they're right here. It's the Media Virus Podcast. Let's point and laugh at the world burning around us with executive producer Mike Latouris. We're going to start over. BBC correspondent Stanley McFadden. Makes me tingly in an unfamiliar way. Grease Monkey Pete. Damn, Big Daddy. Here's the thing about the Media Virus Podcast. It's really well done. And now, spreading the sage nihilism of an aged Gen Xer, your host and mine, the star of our show, the incomparable Maddie Rock Death. <laughs> Ah, damn, do we have a show for you people this week. I am Matty Rockdef, the maddiest of all Rockdefs, and proof positive that anyone can have a podcast. Speaking of, welcome to the Media Virus Podcast. Please like, subscribe, follow, and share. I want to take a minute to thank the new subscribers for their support, whether it's on you know YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, or you know if you're just checking us out on TheMediaVirus.com, you can always give us a call. 646 virus zero one thank you uh you might make it on the show could happen could happen uh it could happen let uh you know what i just want to get the uh, opinions from the panel i want your thoughts because i'm a little torn like i might be the asshole probably no, it it could happen uh, there's a high degree of probability there for that let, let's hear it what do you got yeah well the um you know, my my wife picked me up last Saturday from Pure Shaka. An uh, asshole. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, she wanted to go out to dinner, so we went to Applebee's. And uh, <clears throat> so right off the bat, there was a wait, which was expected. It's Saturday night. Right. You know, it's Applebee's. It's so, but as I'm pacing like back and forth, I noticed that like half the restaurant's empty. Right. Like, as you look at it, like, you know, the right hand side is gone. There's nobody there. Right. The bar is kind of busy. Um, you know, there's because there's a sports game on. Uh-huh. I don't I couldn't tell you what it was, but there was a sports game on. 
And uh, but when I tell you, like it was, it was a it was a good long while. So we eventually get seated, and uh, when I tell you that it was a solid ten minutes before the waiter came over to take our drink order. Yeah, that's that's a bit much. Okay, I mean, like I checked. Like as I looked at the clock, for some reason I just looked at the clock when they okay, like I, unconscious almost. Now you gotta understand something. When I go out, I am pleased and thank you, respectful. Yeah, I'm not a demanding motherfucker when it like wait staff. Like I don't treat people poorly just because they're they're right. doing something for me, right? And uh, but when, when he finally comes over, like lucky for us, we had already decided what we wanted to order, so we gave him a complete order: drinks, appetizers, entrees, the whole yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah, plenty of time. Right. For this point, uh, from this point, everything's fine. Um, you know, the, the pretzels come out because we always get the cheese pretzels, uh, the nice long breadstick pretzel things. They're good, you know, and it's nice to nosh on something. But my now, my wife got like steak and shrimp. Uh huh. Right. Kid got a cheeseburger, and I got fish and chips. Right. Okay. But we it's realized. Healthy. We realized that after, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, fish and chips. Like after the guy walked away, we don't have, we don't have any cereal or cereal. We don't have any silverware. Oh, yeah, that's problematic. Right now, fish and chips can go either way. Yeah, you could you could eat that with you, your hands. You can eat fish and chips with your hands because it's just French fries. You can throw it down on a burger. Right, and you can throw it on a burger, but steak and shrimp, <laughs> like, you kind of need utensils. Yep. Right, and so we. Like, get the guy's attention. We tell him we don't have utensils, right? He goes into the back. We don't see him for a while. Like, we're all – because my son, God bless him, that kid got some manners. <laughs> you know what I mean? He sat there staring at the hamburger. He said wow. he said it He said it out loud. He's like, I, I don't want to eat. I want to eat with you guys. Like, I don't want to eat, you know, and then yeah. watch the guys eat. And, so, and I'm kind of in the same boat. So now we're all staring at our food, right? And I, I couldn't tell you what how long that took because it seemed like an eternity. Yeah. I see the guy walk out of the back with a slip for somebody else, hands him the slip, and then goes, okay, well, I'll be right back. And then goes into the back, then comes out with a slip for somebody else with the check for somebody uh -huh. else. And I go, you know, at this point, we're out of soda. Okay. So food like, getting cold. Yeah, I so I get his attention, and I go, "Hey, man, we still don't have silverware, and we have, you know, we don't uh, refill on diet and diet Pepsi's, you know." Right. Oh, okay, all right, you know. So then it's a couple minutes later, he comes out with the drinks and the and the silverware. So my, now my now the you know my wife can eat. Like her thing was sizzling. They have it sizzle as it comes out. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be part right. of right. He sat there and it sat there for God knows how long because I was fuming at this point. I bet. Now they tell you like, okay, we're, we're short staffed. So? I get that. That's why. That's why half the half the restaurants closed. Okay. We're now, empty. Now, yeah, empty. But the bar was kind of popping. Like I said, so there there were there was people about, but I didn't see that guy working. Like I'm starting to pay attention as to who, who's doing yeah, what. who's doing what because like, we're in his section. We don't like. He's always in the like. Anytime he's not coming out to do something. He runs right back into the, right back into the back. Right. I'm like, well, you know, <clears throat> whatever. Like my wife was telling me that she's watching the couple behind me wait for menus, or wait for drinks or whatever. Whatever she was, you know, she didn't right. get greeted. They didn't get greeted yet, and she's like, oh my god, it's like so we're like really picking this guy apart now. So we finish our meals, and we're like, all the plates are clean. We're literally like folded hands, dude. So then, I don't know. Let, let me put it to you this way. We walked in around 7 o'clock. Uh-huh. Right? When I we got back into the car, it was like 8.30. Wow, an hour and a half at Applebee's is a long time. It's a long time. Like, it was, yeah. you know, it was and enough to make, because, and we only, like, it was just waiting for the check. And they have the thing. You know, that you can pay your shit right at the table, but it's yeah. not like it's sitting there, but it's just not active. Right. Right. So 
you know, then the, oh, then the guy comes up and gives me the bill, right? Right. Well, I promptly give it to my wife because she's the one that, right? You know, makes and holds all the money. Right. This was her idea. So then she takes her credit card, puts it on the you know on the thing, uh huh, and puts it at the end of the table on her side. Right. When he comes back, he hands the card back to me. Back to you, yeah. And I'm like, and then, he, but he like wanders off, like he just kind of like disappears. So I was like, you know what? No, no tip. Fuck him. Don't tip him. And I say I don't say that a lot. No, and you don't say it lightly. But no, I don't. It's terrible. Uh, but it was, you know, I I also think that my wife doesn't necessarily listen to me all the time. Right. <laughs> so what she did is she she it was more than no it was worse than no tip. It was just rounding up the change. Oh, the nearest yeah. dollar. That's fuck you. That's fuck you. Yeah. That's not we So he got like pennies. Sixty three cents. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. On a credit card. And you know what? Oh. He had it coming. Right. Now at literally to the next the next Old dollar amount. Yeah. yeah. I, and I was like, you know what? I've been feeling kind of, I've been feeling kind of bad about that, but you don't want to, you don't want to pay for shitty service. No. And you don't want to encourage it. No. You know what I mean? Because I it's, it's, it, what did I do to upset this man so badly? I don't, I just think he was a piss poor waiter and Maybe. somebody, somebody needed to tell him this isn't for you. Go work construction. <laughs> Cause you don't know what you're doing. You, like you don't, like you could have come out with the two bills and our silverware, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it. It, it I, I you could have been one, and or or you know what? Oh, these people don't have silverware; they just got their food. Let me take care of them first. I'm sort of a stickler for service, but you know, as if if you're trying, and and I can clearly see that it's not your issue. You know, you're in a bad spot. For oh no! This guy was not I excited. Give you some slack, but if if you're just not confident, that's entirely different. I think I I I mean, you know, never attribute to malice what uh, can be explained with with incompetence. Yeah, but I, I really think that his that? it's an old saying. It's an old fl- fl- okay. I don't know who okay. said it. But I hear it a lot. Okay. Um, but th- th- yeah, that's a. The good words to live by. Don't attribute to malice, you know, what, whatever word you want to use, incompetence, you know, uh, uselessness, whatever, you know. But and it was kind of funny because I went out to the car because it was raining. Uh-huh. I was pulling the car up to her to get her. And I was like, because I didn't, I just said no tip and I walked out. Right. And she came and she got, and she's like standing out in the rain. <laughs> And I'm like, what? And so I, I pull up and I go, what are you, why are you? She was afraid of getting like, you know. Well, yeah, that's what she uh, said. Cause I didn't know she, exactly I didn't she left there. Cause here's the thing. Like, you know, even for shitty service, I'll give like 15% just cause it's like the expected right. minimum. Right. His poor service is like, is an expected minimum of 15%. You, 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 you know, but I really believe that this wasn't even piss poor minimum. This was below that. Right, below that. And they needed to be, this person needed to be instructed to go get another job. I mean, it's that simple. Or do the one they have better. I don't, I don't know if they necessarily could. Right. You know, I don't know if he necessarily has the skills because he didn't. Okay. I don't know if it was his first day. I mean, if it was his first day, I sincerely apologize. But yeah, but he should first, have been with somebody else. If, yeah, you know, your first day should be on first Your day. first day at Applebee's shouldn't be on a Saturday fucking night. You know what I mean? But also, you know, it's hard. Like, they keep saying it's hard to find people that will work. Yeah, I mean, or they do their job well. I mean, I know that uh, I know that there's one lawn care uh, specialist out there that uh, you know maybe doesn't uh, maybe doesn't put a whole lot of thought into what he's doing. Well, I mean, in his defense, he thought he he thought the dead body was a Halloween decoration. I mean, who wouldn't? You see a dead body during Halloween, you're like, oh, that's a good decoration. Sweet. That's you a know? good job too. It really looks like a dead dude. Yeah, he's not. Fucking looks like he shit himself. It even smells like a dead dude. Like he was disrobed. 
Yeah, but he, they said he was partially naked and 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 laying in the lawn. You have a story anywhere nearby? I so do. I do. Uh, let's take a. Let's try and figure out what happened here. Man's body mistaken for Halloween prop. Lawn mode around him. In China Grove, North Carolina, a North Carolina family is upset after their loved one's body was mistaken for a <laughs> Halloween decoration and left outside for days. Robert Owen's body was found in China Grove. His family discovered that a, a lawn care worker mowed around his near-naked body, thinking it was a prop. Not for a nothing. Day later, someone else made the gruesome discovery. What, a big pile of shit coming out of his ass? Well, the, the guy. That's the first, one of the first things you do when you die is you, like, evacuate, right? Well, yeah. So, you they're gonna go. People are gonna go to that length of a Halloween decoration to make it smell like shit. Maybe. I mean, Robert does kind of smell like shit. But uh, you know, I know you didn't uh, delve into the world of AI today. No, I did not. We're but we're... Uh, but I did. Uh oh. Okay. Oh so uh, what I let me get let me grab my glasses here. What I did was I write uh, write five jokes in the style of Anthony Jesselman. Okay. Uh, for this story. Now, uh, they're not terrific, but I want to get you guys, I want to get your opinions on them. All right. This is AI thinking like Anthony Jesselin. So I heard about this okay. guy whose body was mistaken for a Halloween prop. It's like that old saying when life gives you lemons, make a Halloween decoration out of it. <laughs> All right. All right. He's number two. So a lawn care worker mowed around this nearly naked body, thinking it was a Halloween prop. I guess you could say they were just trying to help him trim down for the spooky season. <laughs> All right. Number three. I don't know about you, but I've seen some pretty realistic Halloween props. But mistaking a dead body for one takes it to a whole new level. It's like they were going for scared of death instead of scared of life. I don't Okay. All right. All right. Number four. Apparently the family the apparently the family's upset that their loved one's body was mistaken for a Halloween decoration. I mean, if I had to choose between uh being mistaken for a Halloween prop or being mistaken identity at a at a sh comedy show, I'd go with the prop any day. Uh, All right. Imagine maybe. imagine finding out your family member's body was mistaken for a Halloween decoration. It's a real trick or treat situation, and I'm pretty sure they weren't going for that treat. There is a there is a note here that AI decided to put in. It said Anthony Jeselnik is known for his dark and edgy humor, so these jokes are written in a similar style. Please be mindful of the sensitivity of the subject matter. Uh, so that that's AI's way of saying, "Dear Matt, you're a dick." Pretty much. <laughs> in case you forgot, you're a dick. So. I didn't think any of them were particularly good, but uh, yeah. they could all use a little bit of polish. But you know, they're, 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 it's a good start. Maybe, who knows? Don't know how you can do that," said Owen's sister, Haley Shue. Mow right around beside someone and assume that there are Halloween decorations at a house that no one lives in. The last time the family saw Owens was Sunday, October first. Uh, it wasn't until a week later that police found him in a down a long driveway off Shoe Road in China Grove. He had little clothing on and was face down in the grass outside the home that the family says has been empty for quite some time. You know, I think we should. Here's why we should fire that long that 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 gardener, that landscaper. Okay. This is why he should be fired because he obviously didn't weed whack around the fucking thing. Because had he weed whacked around the thing, he'd have noticed. He'd have noticed that this was an actual human being. Good Probably. point. All right. There you go. Good point. Yeah. Uh, police told uh, his sister and mother that the 34 year old hadn't been shot. They had to gather. How old? 34. Holy shit. Uh, apparently, their grandmother had lived off a of shoe road for 40 plus years. And uh, he's never been to this particular house. He's never known of this house this far off of the road. And he's never been back there. 
He's n- he's never been known to come here. Apparently, he never went to that place. That's what they're trying to say. So there's no reason for the for him to be right, there. Right, but they they do admit he has been known to do drugs. Oh, I mean, how many times? Too seriously, how many times have you walked into the wrong place? Like it, it's happened. Wrong, it's happened to me. <laughs> it's not the wrong house, but you know, I've I've walked into the wrong places before, so. So yeah, I mean that's kind of a weird story. They don't they don't really know much more. Um, yeah, I just thought that'd be fun for the spooky season. Yeah. Speaking well, then, of spooky, um, China and U.S. race to unleash killer AI robot soldiers as military power hangs in the balance, according to experts. Yeah, so we have to compete with something that we're working on now. They're limiting uh, China access to a lot of the AI chips that we've developed probably not a bad idea yeah i don't think we should have them produced over there anymore either probably not you know but uh china and the u.s are locked in a race to develop new weapons controlled by artificial intelligence a battle that could determine the world's balance of power the race with china to build autonomous weapon systems is the defining defense challenge of the next 100 years christopher alexander chief analytics officer at Pioneer Development Group told Fox News Digital. The comments come as a Reuters report last month detailed the ongoing struggle between U.S. and its allies and China over the development of AI weapons, a competition that has only become increasingly heated with the world observed successful use of the technologies to resist an invasion of seemingly superior Russian forces for over a year. All right, so this is a good time to break in. Uh, so I asked AI to write five, five jokes. Five jokes. <laughs> but this time, in the style of John Stewart. Okay. All right. Okay. And I think these jokes are they're a little bit better. All right. All right. They're kind of smart. So here we go. So the China, this U.S. So the U.S. and China are in a race to unleash killer AI robot soldiers, and it's not because they want to see who can build the best dance moves. It's like futuristic game of Rock'em Sock'em Robots, where the Rock'em takes the Rock'em part takes a whole new meaning. It's, eh. Not bad. All right. So uh, this AI arms race is like the tech version of a Cold War. You know, back in my day, it was all about nuclear weapons. And now it's all about AI-powered submarines the size of school buses. We've gone from duck and cover to dodge the ghost shark. Uh, it's a little different. Remember the good old days when the scariest thing about AI robot was the vacuum running over your foot? Now we're worried <laughs> about killer robots taking over the world. I miss the simple times. You've got to love the balance of power in the world. Now depends on who can develop the best AI weapons. It's like a real life game of chess, but instead of kings and queens, we've got AI controlled fighter jets and drones. Checkmate, Skynet. <laughs> I like the Skynet reference. Oh, yeah. I, like I always got to get a Skynet reference. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Uh, so the U.S. the U.S. is in an arms race against China to develop AI weaponry. It's a bit like trying to outdo your neighbor's holiday decorations, but instead of more lights and ornaments, it's killer AI subs and autonomous fighter jets. Tis the season for extreme military tech competition. <laughs> hmm. uh, AI seems to have a political bent. I mean, I still John Stewart, right? Yeah, John Stewart's John got Stewart. Yeah, he's got a political bend. Is there anything, anything else we should? Rep- I mean, it is fucking. It, it's it's terrifying that we're in this. Like nobody's ever fucking seen Terminator. Like what yeah. the fuck? They've been telling us about this shit for the, since the eighties. Even before that, <laughs> uh, back in the seventies, they we had uh, two thousand one: A Space Odyssey. Remember that? You know, Hal? Right. I'm sorry, Dave. Has Has anybody seen the movie, uh, what is it, Robot Jocks? Or uh, ro- I think there's another one called Robot Wars. No, but I've, I have been watching this movie called Customer Wars, or a show on Peacock called Customer Wars. Okay. Hmm. It's fucking fantastic. Okay. Okay? Because it's all just, like, home shot video of people, uh, customers being complete fucking assholes. Really? 
Oh, I gotta it's watch fucking that. Like group I'm turning fights, that on when I'm done here. Big group fights, all kinds of shit. And uh, if you know, and I've been watching the just, you know, people are fucking assholes, and just how like you know how tense things can be, and like people people fucking freaking out at people for no fucking reason. Yeah, just screaming. And here's the thing. I watched this show and I've I've made note that it's about I would say eighty nine percent women acting like assholes. Yeah, hmm. I mean that happens a lot. I mean, I've <laughs> I've fucked up. I I have gone down the wrong road before. I mean, it does. It does. No, we all have. Absolutely. I I, I have many many flaws. But like like any, pandemic when I think I think if you were to, if you had tried to do this like twenty years ago, you'd probably get mostly dudes. Yeah, you know what I mean. But now it's the women are dangerous. Dude, yep. there was one. There was a drunk guy. This was fantastic. I, you know, there's you see, you just root for them. You just root for who you know is right. Right, you know I mean? and you can tell who's right immediately. Yeah, it's it's not. So a, there's this there's this drunk guy that got pissed off because he didn't get a straw. Right. Okay. But, but in the state, you have to ask for it. It was all during, it was mostly during the pandemic. Right. You have to ask for a straw. Right. So this dude, he's trying, he wants, you know, she's kind of fighting with us. And she was a smaller lady, but he grabbed her apron. Oh. And dude, she beat the shit out of him. Beat the shit out. Like, yeah. like, I, in, like it's not, you find out that she comes from a family of boxers. <laughs> yeah, so she, she just knows how to throw. She, she knows how to throw. A pump. On him. Oh my god! But that show is absolutely fantastic. Awesome. And uh, I mean, a- after watching that, you're like, yeah, I think uh, I think AI should destroy humanity. That's well, that's probably the best thing for. That would probably be the best thing for everybody. Well, I mean, everybody look at, likes a good ass whipping, right? Now think about this. We're talking about this. I'm saying how I think it would be a good idea that AI destroys humanity i'm gonna take this fucking closed captioning chat and i'm gonna put it and i'm gonna ask ai to make me a video description right right but don't you think that it's just kind of one more voice saying please destroy us all that's what it sounds like now you know what i mean it could i don't i I mean i don't want to take credit for the end of humanity (laughs) (laughs) I didn't do it. You can't you want prevent everyone it. to know you were involved. Oh well, yeah, I just want to be a small part of the destruction right. of civilization. That's all. Yeah, that's all I've ever wanted. You know what I mean? And here I am. You know, <laughs> Philly. <laughs> believe it or not, Philly sports would be a good place for you because it's all starting to fall in there too. I really wish I. I, re- I really wish I could give a shit about sports sometimes. Well, I. I. That's why I've I've taken the liberty of bringing the best clip from last night's game to the show tonight. You I know you normally put report on on baseball especially. Uh but I Did you watch the game? I did not. I I I've li- I listened to a little bit of the, the game the night before when I was driving, but uh, I did not last night. Last night I went and had dinner with my grandson and my wife and the kids. Um then we uh I brought her back home. I drove for just a little bit and I came home and I went to bed early. I went to bed before the game was over. All right, so let's uh we're running out of time, so let's see this clip. All right. Well, okay, here we go. So, um last night after the Phillies crushed the Diamondbacks. And when I say crushed, I mean fucking crushed the Diamondbacks. 10 nothing. Right 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 in Philly at the ballpark. Uh it gives it brings them to a 2 nothing lead in the NLCS series. Uh one of the fans, a Philadelphia fan, uh, became excited and wanted to celebrate with the team uh, because, I mean, how great is it that, you know, you've got another win? Yeah, fans are nuts, dude. Especially they, Philadelphia they, fans. They're nuts. Yeah. Philadelphia, I mean, we've got a, we've got a history, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody knows about us. So, come on. Mike's trying to share a screen. Well, listen, while you're trying to share your screen, I'm, I'm getting Brian. ready to, to do the share, yeah. Um, I uh, this I time I asked AI for five jokes uh, in the style of David Tell. Okay. All right. So, but let's see the clip first. So, okay. Do you have the screen? 
Yes. Coming. Yep. Okay. There it is. So this is shot from from the fence, essentially, right? Right. It's yeah. a cell phone footage. Yeah. So these are the pitchers walking in from the bullpen after the game. So this is like literally just as the game is ending. Okay. Oh. He made it pretty far, though. Holy shit. He got lambasted. Oh. Oh. Boom. Oh. Hey, love that. I got that. I got it. I, got it. I, I, I can't stop watching it. Oh. Hey, what's that guy in blue? Is he a fucking... No, he's cha- he was chasing him. Okay. Yeah, the, the, everybody, everybody that's, that's descending on him is security. Oh my god. I mean that was perfect form for attack. Yeah. And he got he got walloped. Holy shit. And you know, if you've ever gone to a Philly you know, to a, a Phillies game, you see all these guys standing around the sideline. They're, they're, they're all along the foul lines throughout the game. Whenever whenever there's an inning change or anything, they, they step out onto the onto the warning track and they just stand there. But those are the guys that when something goes down, because there was one night we were up there and there was a streaker, and he was awesome. He ran in. He was running around smacking smacking players on the ass. He stopped at the third base and shook hands with the third baseman. <laughs> Took off again. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, he made them look like complete assholes. But it's always fun to watch them when they finally get to him. Because, like, I was telling my wife that night, I was like, when they finally catch him, he's going to get walloped because they look stupid. They're out of breath and he's still. Yeah. I wouldn't, up. I wouldn't want to be like him <laughs> in, in, in those little alleyways where there is nobody. Right. All right. So the Phillies win 10 to 10 to zero, but the real showstopper was a fan who decided to reenact an NFL tackle on the field. I guess he wanted to be MVP, MVP of his own concussion bowl. <laughs> <laughs> You know where you're in Philly when the fans celebrate by taking hits harder than Rocky Balboa training montage. Yo, Adrienne, I just ran onto the field and met a security guard that was tougher than Club of Lying. <laughs> the Phillies ran the Philly fan who ran onto the field thought he was auditioning for the next Jackass movie. I mean, nothing says bad life decisions like sprinting from a security like a human football. <laughs> Members of the Philly bullpen. Members of the Phillies bullpen witnessed this fan's daring dash. They did. They were probably thinking, man, we thought we'd seen some crazy pitches, but this guy just threw himself into the ground with no warning. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned. Don't be that guy who runs onto the field. You'll get tackled like you're in an action movie, only to find that the plot twist is a night in jail. It's not smart and definitely not cool unless you're starring in Prison Break Philly edition. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, but yeah, they uh, he really got nailed, and I, I I just I thought that footage was spectacular, fantastic. You know, for those interested, you can come out and see me at uh, Pure Shaka in the Boothwin or uh, it's Booth Corner Farmers Market. I'll be there from on Saturday or on Friday today, as you hear this, uh, from like ten to two, and then to, uh, the, on Saturday tomorrow, I'll be there. I think like nine to two or three or something like that. So come on down, get an autograph because free CBD. And uh, what else? Uh, Mike, there you get knocked on your ass in a whole different way. (laughs) (laughs) I, uh, I I always like to take a moment at the end of the a block to remind everybody that uh, tonight's presentation, uh, all three blocks are brought to you uh, by 302-46 voice. If you need somebody to say something, you might, it might as well be me. 302 46 voice for all of your voiceover needs. My Sports Art Shop. Uh, you can check them out over on Redbubble. They've got a, 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 a art shop DVD, over there. All kinds of fantastic art, uh, including animals and uh, sports themes. Uh, some some of them crossing over and uh, making some, some really neat things that you can have printed on all manner of gifts. They're at Redbubble, uh, and that's my sports art shop. And then there's the Disruptive Minds podcast. Our good friend, staff writer Bill, who we're going to have in here because I, 
we've talked about his Jaworski card rookie card collection before, and it's nearing the 100 mark. Uh, I think I want- that's a world record for Ron Jaworski rookie cards. Well, I'd like to think that maybe it is, and you know, we'll do a press release. We'll have to uh, we'll have to research that and find out if we can actually claim that. And if we can, uh, we'll do some press releases and see if anybody grabs it. Um, maybe we can all get a little publicity out of it. Uh, speaking of publicity, if you wanted to give us some publicity, you could write our number on a bathroom wall. It's one six four six virus zero one. That's one six four six virus zero one. Just write for a good time call one six four six virus zero one and have them leave us a message, and we'll play those messages on our air. So yeah, that's a. I actually I think that's a, a really good guerrilla strategy. Put this number everywhere. We'll see who calls. Oh, here this is. I just thought of this while you were saying that we should get. Uh, we should have stickers made out. This is just get get checked now. And six four six virus zero one. Oh yeah, that's good. And then, good. but like we don't say what virus it is. No, no. But hopefully, no. people will just call up and tell us all about their gun. We could do little. We could do stupid handbills. I'll, I'll I'll change the message for that so that it says. <laughs> I'll just make it real dry. Hello and thank you for calling one six four six virus zero one. To get checked, please describe your message. symptoms. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll I make. Think, it. I think we get there's there's probably some kind of legality that's going to prevent us from doing that. I f- I feel like that's because people are going to think they're getting help. Well, I'll I'll make sure that the message makes it clear that this is being recorded for a podcast. All right, but I'll make sure that that's at the end, right before the beep. Okay. By the way, it's all goof. <laughs> we're not really doctors so uh that's all i had to tell you about and we're going to get out of here because uh we're taking it down to the wire here with just a minute or so left um once again it's one six four six virus zero one you can see us uh in all of our glory on the internet uh at our website the dot com. you can send us an email matt at the media um Pete, Pete at the media virus.com. Pete, Pete at the media virus. Pete, Pete, Pete com. Com or um, PML. PML at the media virus.com. So shoot us an email. You know, do what you can for the. Uh, now we're just, tr- we're literally just trying to see if we can end the show perfectly. But uh, how are we doing? On t- we're down to about a minute 15. So I'm going to reach over here into my bag of tricks where I will find the perfect bumper to play us out of here. And I will choose, oh, this one. And we're back on the sea. Son of a bitch. Ah. (laughs) All right. We're going to get done here in about 90, well, 45 seconds probably. I just, I'm going to click end. Okay. I'll start the chat.